Hello friends, this week we are talking to Nabu. He is also known as Nabil Pala. Nabu is an upcoming rapper and musician based in Sydney. In his early years, he used to dance and now that outlet has moved into music. He has immersed himself in understanding music production to work on his upcoming solo project. In this week's episode, we talk about creative risks, everyone on their own timeline, and Nabu's writing process. Nabu and I first met through his sister, Janine. Over a decade ago, he would accompany his sister to DJ events. You would find him dancing or in a dance battle. Now he has moved into music and this is his journey thus far. If you enjoyed this episode, please, please show your love on Spotify by giving it a five-star rating. It'll take about seven seconds and it'll help get these episodes out to more people. You don't even have to write anything. Just two taps and it's done. All right. Love you guys. Enjoy the episode. I want to know more about your performances. So you said growing up when you used to perform, it was an outlet for you. So tell me more about that. I wouldn't necessarily say it was just the performance part that was the outlet. It was, I guess it was more so the lead up and the practice and the, me in my room in front of my mirror playing music with my door shut. That was, that was the, I guess, the expressive part. I mean, I wasn't like, you know, um, super angry kid. Uh, but I obviously had like some frustrations and whatnot, just being a general teenager and a boy. Um, and also um, uh, maybe not my background, but just the, the way I was brought up, I guess. Um, so it was always like suppressing feelings and whatnot. Um, so dancing is my outlet in that sense. And I guess to an extent performance from that as well. So I would always do, like you said, parties. I would always be the show pony at weddings um and birthdays whatever it may be um and then obviously I did performances during high school culture night and also uni to up till about 2014-15 I think the last like big performance I did was my sister's Sangeet in 2014 for dancing anyway um so I mean yeah then it kind of transitioned to the music stuff and I haven't really looked back at dancing since still love it still appreciate when other people do it um I still have a love for hip-hop dancing in general um and obviously music on top of that so I've never really fallen out of love with it but as far as like applying myself to it I kind of just it kind of just ended there that's so interesting because I just realized you know I guess growing up did performing help you in building your performance muscle that you later used as a rapper yeah I think so yeah um it obviously is quite different um especially like it, it's similar but it's also that it's also different because obviously you're training your body to remember moves and when you're um, rapping or doing vocal performances you're training your vocals as well as your remember you have to memorize the lyrics and you have to um kind of make sure you get it all on point especially considering like people don't know my words yet i'm still quite like low-key in regards to uh the public um so as far as me remembering my words i can't get things wrong now maybe down down the line when people do know my words um, it'll be fine for me to forget because I'll just have other people doing it for me in, in the audience. Um, but for now, I have to make sure everything's on point because if I screw up, then it leaves a bad impression and I'm not, it's going to be, I'm going to remember it as a guy that screwed up and not the guy that put on a good show, which is obviously what I'm trying to do. What entails a good show to you? Well, it's, uh, uh, I guess, well, how I felt is the most important thing. I want to make sure I come off the stage knowing that I did a good job. Um, and I don't want to be thinking back at those little moments where I got one little mistake wrong or because um, I'm, I'm very pedantic about this stuff. I wouldn't say I'm a perfectionist. I've tried to avoid being a perfectionist um, and it can drive you crazy, obviously. Um, that's what you're told all the time. Try not to be a perfectionist. Nothing is ever perfect. Um, but also like crowd reaction. Um, and if I can see people are kind of jamming along or appreciating what I'm doing, then I know I'm doing a good job as well. And it, it was like that with dancing. Um, obviously, it was different with Indian aunties and stuff clapping for yeah. um, and this is just random people who I've never met um, who are appreciating it so it's of course leaving a good impression and also the feeling of how, like how I felt coming up the stage. Shout out to your sister for starting your performance career we got to give kudos to her. <laughs> yeah for sure. Um, okay so tell me at what point did you decide that rapping was gonna be or being a musician was gonna be the thing now? Um, I don't think there's any real definitive point because like I said, it was always just like an outlet to me and it was just a different form of expression, I guess. Um, there was a period where I was doing both and 
it's not very common for rappers to dance these days anyway. It used to be in the 80s, 90s when it was like still um, brewing. Um, but nowadays it's it's mostly just the vocal aspect of it. Um, so it was definitely that period in like 2012, 13 where I was doing both. Um, and I was still obviously rapping as much as I possibly could um, for that time period and dancing as well. So I was doing like uni performances and there was like weekly um, dance meetups at Macquarie Uni uh, when I went where I went. And um, I couldn't even tell you why it happened. Um, it just kind of did. And I haven't, I've had a regret of it. Um, and I definitely have fallen so much in love with music that I can't look back either. Who are your greatest influences? I know this is a mean question, but some of your greatest influences. It depends because um, obviously there's, been, there's a lot of dancers I was into. Um, and then there's obviously like the icons that no one can say didn't influence them to some extent. Um, but as far as like rapping goes, growing up, I listened to, and it's a, it's embarrassing to say now because he gets a lot of hate, but I listen to a lot of Eminem, like a lot. Um, and I, I honestly, and he gets he gets a lot of hate by Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. People don't um, appreciate what he did, but all their favorite rappers studied the way Eminem wrote and approached music. Um, and they got as good as they did because they were able to kind of pick on his um, approach and the way he wrote and the way he kind of attacked his rhymes. Um, and I did the same thing. Um, I've kind of developed from them, not developed in the sense that I've gotten better, but I've kind of built on what I learned and kind of picked up my own style from there as well. Um, more modern, um, in a more modern sense, um, Charles Cambino or Donald Glover. Uh, I've been following closely for like at least a decade. So um, he's one of my biggest inspirations and not just because of music, but he's, he's an overall artist and he's done that so well for so long and his um, evolution has just been incredible to watch. Um, so from his music to his um, acting and he's, he's, he was in like one of the recent Spider-Man movies, like he's just gone from the guy who was on Community to one of like the biggest artists in the world. Um, and that's like a trajectory that I want to move towards. Um, so it's something that I obviously truly appreciate. He can't be put into a box. Exactly right. And he's he's proven that. And so obviously so is like Kanye and so many other artists, a lot of low-key ones as well, even if they're not like in the public eye. But that's that's me as well. Like I don't want to just necessarily stick to music, even if it is what I love to do and what I appreciate the most. Um, eventually I want to start learning other things and make sure I build on that as well. So you met your friend Nikhil in uni and you started collaborating together. Tell me what was the difference between or what is the difference between working solo on your work and collaborating with someone? Um, it's it's mostly having the ability to bounce ideas off each other. Because um, I, if, I if I think something in my head, it might sound good to me. But if you say it out loud to someone else, they're going to say, wait, dude, that's stupid. Like, why would you want to do that? And it's not necessary, like, I, not, not because if, I, if somebody tells me it's dumb, I'm going to say, yeah, you're right. Like, I obviously believe in my thoughts as well. It's not just relying on other people. But definitely being able to bounce ideas off each other um, gets ideas flowing a lot more. And there was definitely that period where that was the case. And it was just fun. It was stupid. And if you ever go back and listen to the SoundCloud stuff, it's just awful subject matter and I could never revisit it. But it was a lot of fun to make. And I hold that, like, period very closely. Um, to my I guess my music development uh, because it was there was a lot of freedom and I as much as I had the freedom now to kind of make what I want um, he was he was focused on the production and I was focused on the rap um, so it was a good combination in that sense and now I'm trying to do everything by myself and it's obviously a lot more time consuming um, and a lot more frustrating because there's so many little things that you don't know you need to learn um, and there's no like instructions on how to get to where you need to be. It's kind of just you dive in and you have to figure it out. You got to turn the knobs, you got to change the levels, whatever it may be, until you get to the sound you want. And um, having two people to do it, or even more people on top of that, just makes it a lot easier to focus on one thing. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's probably um, the biggest, the major difference. How have you worked with your inner critic to? get creative and more creative and and going into places like production that you haven't really gone into to learn more and more how do you fight that fear 
I think it's just always falling back on the fact that I have to do it. I remind myself that I have to do it. And, and the thing is, I don't actually have to do it. If I went out and was a bit more social um, and met more people, then I would be able to obviously find people that can kind of do that side of things for me. Um, that's obviously been really difficult in the last two years with the situation. Um, and I think um, knowing that, like having my eyes on the final goal, um, knowing where I want to get is what forces me to keep going or pushes me to keep going. It's like, if I stop now, what's the point? Like what I just wasted the last, not wasted because it was still obviously development, but I just like use those last three years to not get to where I want to go. So it's, it's, a waste of time realistically like if i if i want to do it then i got to make sure i get there otherwise there's no point in doing it for me looking back on the ep that you so embarrassingly look back on but fondly as well i want to know at that age how however old you were to release that there is a lot of guts in releasing something that early and i think i i wonder if that's part of the fondness of just being like ruthlessly like i'm gonna put this out there like i don't give two shits about it and i wonder what that creative risk taught you that's the thing like you would think that something like that would um make me be a bit more free but i think i got a little bit more critical which isn't necessarily a bad thing um it made me like sit back and analyze my work a little bit more um rather than just being like wait this is ready to go out let's just leave it out let's just push it out um and it, there's it is that there's that um border i guess the the boundary where it's like do i not think about it and just release it or do i overthink it make sure the details are all there uh, be as pedantic as i can possibly be and make sure everything is how i want it to be and you, i, I want to find that middle ground where i'm not overthinking it and i'm not being too relaxed about it I want to make sure it's the work that I want it to be without um, being too hard on myself to make it as perfect as possible, I guess. Um, so that, I do have to ask, are you talking about my original one from early uni years or the one that I deleted that I mentioned? I mean, I think both, but I think the first one, especially because when you put something out for the first time, it's such a high and release and just joy. And then still it's like, oh, what did I just do? Or like looking back on it, you think, oh, that's so silly. But so many great artists look back on their early works and they're like, what was I thinking? But that informs so much, not even just musicians, but writers and so many creative artists. They're like, what was I even thinking? But at that time, you're just like, let's just go, let's go. But that's so interesting that you find this blend of not being too hard on yourself, not overthinking it and being too relaxed. It's a really, and is that something you're discovering right now and still exploring to find what the right blend I think, is? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, there's definitely moments where I have to kind of push myself. Um, and there's definitely moments where it's, everything just comes out of me. Like I'll sometimes sit there, like even like last night, I had to wake up at work this morning and um, I, try to go to sleep around midnight because i have to wake up around 8 8 15. um but i it was like it was like all closer to one and i was still like working on these beat and i'm like i have to go to sleep and like that was one of those moments where i was like oh like i really want to continue but i have like other commitments which also sucks in a sense but it's it's how obviously life is um but there's yeah i guess that middle ground is what's still what i'm trying to find um i don't want to the biggest thing is that i don't want to overwork myself and overwork in the sense of um like i'm happy to be uncomfortable and out of my comfort zone and growing as an artist um but i don't want to burn myself out and fall out of love with what i'm doing do you mean you want to keep it sustainable and have longevity in the work in terms of definitely. your interest it okay yes okay gotcha definitely, yeah. and that's why it doesn't bother me how much time it takes it doesn't bother me if i have other things i need to do commitment wise um it's more so like if I become the artist I want to become, I'm going to be completely happy with how it all went. I love that. That's that's really, really cool. Tell me what your writing process is like. Just the other night, I haven't actually done this in a while, um, but I was going to sleep and then I just had like a bunch of lyrics in my head that I need to write down. Um, and that used to happen uh, a lot. And I think that comes with how much I'm working. Um, and if I go for, if I have like a few dry periods where I'm not actually um making any music or whatever it may be just like living i guess um that, that that's where it starts coming back down where it's like oh like wait this is what i love doing and then i just like the lyrics pop in my head i have to write them down but if i'm like working at it um every day which i obviously try to um it doesn't necessarily come as naturally because it's like more like a routine um 
so once again, it's finding that middle ground of routine versus um, random inspiration, I guess. Well, practice really. So you're practicing every day. What is, can you tell me what your practice, what does your practice involve? Just out of curiosity. I mean, for a singer, I get it, but what is a practice for a, ra- a rapper? Well, that's the thing. I don't really practice my rap being anymore. It's more so a production and more so like mixing and sound engineering right now. So that's more so what I'm like trying to uh, put, like improve at the moment. Because um, as far as my rapping goes, I think I'm quite good at it. Like I don't, I don't feel like I need to necessarily develop it as much. Um, and that it's mostly reliant on the beats that I'm working over. Um, so because obviously rap comes down to the rhymes and it comes down to the flows as well. Um, so as when I say rhymes, I mean like lyrics. So flows versus lyrics, and the flow is always reliant. Is 99% of the time relying on the beat that you're working with um, and the lyrics will just be whatever comes out of my head I guess so I usually don't even think about it it's just first thing that pops in my head um, but um, in regards to like my writing process as well I will usually be writing I could be on my phone I could actually even be on my laptop which is a bit weird I don't think many people do that but I'm just like typing stuff out um, but I am pretty relentless in the sense that I'll come up with a line and I will kind of read that line like 40 times and be listening to the beat to try and see what the and whatever the next one comes out will be the next one that comes out it's not it's um it's very like it's not necessarily calculated but i'm relentless at making sure i can kind of figure out the direction of the song if that makes sense yeah that's so cool that actually reminds me of writers when writers are writing their manuscripts and they're writing their drafts what they're actually doing is rereading all writers are readers so they're rereading and rereading and rereading and then whatever they have for that day or whatever they write for that day is just an add-on to the flow of what they've read and reread that's really cool that's really cool okay so you mentioned that you had plans in the pandemic and then they got sidetracked but you're chipping away at it can you tell me about how you sustained yourself creatively during that time um yeah it was it did get tough and I'm sure it was tough for a lot of people um, because it's very hard to create when you're not really living, living, I guess, like you're not going out, you're not seeing friends, you're not going to shows, you're not seeing new things, experiencing new things. Like that's where the inspiration comes from. And I'm sure that's the case for a lot of creatives. Um, but I mean, there's also a lot of producers who sit in a dark room for seven times a week and still make the most amazing stuff. So it obviously works differently for everyone. Um, but, um, it was, it was once again, it was just like making sure I sat down at my desk and was working towards whatever it may be. Even if I wrote two lines that day, or if I wrote 16 bars, whatever, whatever way it went, it was a successful day for me. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't too hard on myself because it wasn't, it was obviously a very unusual situation. Um, if, even if it's been going on for almost three years now, uh, but it's, it's, um, it was definitely a matter of making sure that I sat down, I reminded myself why I do this. I made sure that I did it. And then I, even if I came out the end, out the other end with not a lot of, um, nothing of like really written down or um, recorded, then I'd still be happy. I watched a movie the other day. I watched King Richard the other day. Oh, cool. And, How was it? Yeah, it was really, really good. Um, and he wrote a 72 page plan for his two daughters to become the biggest tennis stars in the world. Oh, wow. Okay. And he wrote that pe- like that plan before they were even born. Wow. And I wonder if you were to write your 72-page plan, where is it going and what's the dream for you? Um, it, the biggest thing is touring. Um, I want to be able to tour my music. And I want to be able to go to Europe with it. I want to be able to go to the States with it. I want to be on, um, get the respect of the people I've always respected. Um, I really don't, I honestly don't care. Like it's obviously going to come with it and I'm never like, I'm not saying I'm going to do it for free, but as far as the money side of it goes, I've never been concerned about that. It's the joy I get out of actually doing it. Um, and even, even in Sydney, there's a lot of artists I have so much respect for, um, who have also been sidetracked by obviously recent times. Um, and having them, um, I guess, see me in the light that I see them would, would uh, bring me a sense of fulfillment. Um, I don't know if that'll take up 72 pages, but it'll <laughs> definitely be something major that I'm working towards. So, um, and obviously working with so many of the artists that I've always held in like such a 
um, big spotlight. Um, like if I ever had the opportunity to work even in the smallest um, scale with Donald Glover, that'd be, well, I'd, I'd probably say, I'm sure I would. Obviously social media these days makes it so, so, much, so much easier to follow. And I like the way an artist lives, how they work um, and kind of everything to do is, is put online. Um, so being able to be a part of that process would be just next level for me. How do you manage the, you know, the feedback that you get from social media and kind of the, the content that you put out versus the content that you're working on? Like, how do you manage that as an artist to not be overwhelmed by either one because I, I find that a, some people can post stuff on Instagram and Twitter and social media and feel like they're actually making stuff but they're just doing they're like making moments but not like a full track or a full body of work so how do you not let social media carry you away um it's I, I think it's just a matter of reminding myself and it, there's, there's definitely been moments and I've definitely spiraled at points where it's like um, I see people who have been doing it for maybe a quarter of the time that I have um, getting recognition like this. And it's just like all, all, a lot of these artists I follow, a lot of them have been in the same situation. And there's so many artists that have blown up um, in later years or gotten the recognition that they should have gotten early on, but obviously it didn't fall into the um, right hands or seen by the right eyes. Um, there's so many of those artists that after working, doing it for 15, 20 years, they finally get the recognition they deserve. Um, and that's a reminder um, that it's always going to be possible and never to give up. Um, and comparison is the thief of joy as well. So, and that's a, that's a very common saying, uh, but I do my best not to compare to people um, regardless of how they're going or how I think I'm going. Um, and I just, you just, it's just easy to remember that everyone's on their own timeline as well. It, 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 everyone has their own, like, way of living and they all have their own experiences so whether or not someone does it quicker or slower than you it does not really matter how do you let money not stress you out or get in the way of your creativity um it does <laughs> yeah tell, tell me about it because i'm sure a lot of people struggle with that yeah yeah um well i mean the thing is i i, I live out of home um and i have for like five years so i've obviously had to pay rent pay bills like everybody else does like the normal way um and that originally wasn't necessarily bad like especially in the learning stages but now it's gone to the point where you want to kind of where I want to kind of um you know make sure my sound is crisp in the sense of like engineering so I've got to make sure the right people are working with it um and that's also why I'm learning so I eventually can fund myself to do it and not have to not necessarily work with others and also have full control of like the starting and finished product. Um, so it, there's, there's always that like money. I feel like until this actually happens to me, um, money is always going to be a concern, but I don't let it um, affect the creative process because the actual content creation, I don't, I don't need money for it. Like I have a laptop, I have speakers, I have a little MIDI board um, that I use and you really don't need more than that. Um, I could I could rap in my room if I wanted to and get like like get like the right person to make it sound good, but um and that would obviously cost a lot of money. But then it's also a matter of like spending time creating whatever I want to create and then putting money aside and going to the studio for half a day or twelve hours, whatever it may be, and making sure I get as much output as possible and make sure the product is what what I want the product to be and practice for months beforehand. So it's just like saving for anything else, really. Mm. Okay. Well, you're now working on a solo project this year and you're working on it with your two dear friends. And then you've also got some releases coming up this year without telling us too much. You did mention that it's about, you know, you're going into exploring your roots. Can you talk about that and what this year entails for you? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, so my, my solo stuff, like there's always, it's always going to touch on my roots and there's always going to be things in relation to my upbringing, my family, my parents. I mean, realistically, I'm trying to pay off my parents' mortgage eventually <laughs> and make sure they can live a healthy and happy life without having to think about money themselves. Um, that's one of my biggest goals. I don't want them to stress anymore. I want them to just relax, chill out because they do too much. They've always done too much, as I'm sure 
a lot of kids can identify with. Um, but as far as my own work goes, it's it's always uh, just me, and it's a reflection of me. And this other this other project that I'm working on, I can't really like I said, I can't reveal too much. But um, it's it's there's three of us where we all had very similar or the same upbringings and it's just something we've always wanted to explore and it's like our our culture is so deep and rich um as far as like color music you combine all that and then you go like as far as bollywood goes um and then just india in general like well, there's two billion people living in india or something like that like it's it, it, there's no there's no boundaries we have so much to explore and feel and see um that it's it's the perfect thing to touch on um and i think obviously every culture has their own um history but as far as india goes um we we have a lot to be proud of a lot to be happy with um especially with what we've made and even in the environment um in regards to like poverty and whatnot um we have a lot to be proud of um and we created our own world aside from the westernized cultures um obviously bollywood versus hollywood very different like if you go to Netflix and Amazon Prime, whenever you look at a Bollywood film, it says musical. And like, it's not something I ever considered. I never considered <laughs> Bollywood to be musical. It's always That's been true. movies with songs in the middle of them. And I'm never being like, this, is, this isn't a musical, but it's just like the way the Western culture looks like. Because they're never going to break out into dance in a Brad Pitt film. That's never going to happen. Um, but it's because, and for them, it's like, oh, yeah, they're singing and dancing in the middle of the movie. That's a musical. It's like, no, this is just how we do things. It's because we're good at everything. Why can't we have our own style? Why does it have to be a musical? You know what I mean? Bollywood's just another beast. Exactly. And it's, I don't think people realize how much of a beast it is. Um, but yeah, as far as like, I think it's just, it's, it's so deeply entrenched in who we are as people. Um, that one, we can't ignore it as much as we wanted to. And that's, there's evidence of that in my upbringing. Like my sister still shoves Bollywood down my throat to this day, which now I appreciate. Back then I didn't. Now I definitely appreciate. I like um, message her and I'm like, can you send me music that I can sample? And she sends me like 12 things and I will start working with them. So I'm glad that I have that for one. But um, the fact that there's so much to touch on, that's, I think that's what makes us want to do it. Um, as well as it, it's just literally who we are. Why ignore it? I remember when I went to your family home um, and I was hanging out with Janine, I remember the the memories that I have of you was like your music blasting, <laughs> like blasting. And then I remember a ca- like a hat collection. Yes. Has anything changed? Uh, a little bit. I don't have any of those hats anymore. I have like, so that was like 150. Uh, too many hats now i have no idea where half of them are or like three quarters of them now i have like just a select few um and i guess the biggest change is that i don't spend my money as like i'm more wise about the way i spend my money because i need to be because i'm the one that's accountable i'm it's not my parents paying for my shelter anymore it's me paying for my shelter um so i gotta be aware that i can't just buy 120 150 hats like (laughs) <laughs> just cause, cause it's a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what it was. I was like, I'm just sitting on eBay like, Ooh, I can bid for this hat. This is so dumb. Okay. So if people want to follow you and find out more about you, where can they go? Let them know. Um, so Instagram.com forward slash the bill parlor. Um, and then Twitter, I'm going to change this. Ah, uh, no, it's fine. Twitter.com forward slash Nabu 92. So I'm actually changing my artist name. Um, it was Lieutenant Bill, which is what was created when I was doing that super early stuff. But now it's my nickname since I was a kid, which is Nabu, N-A-B-U. Um, and that's what I'll be going by from now on because obviously it's a bit more closer to home. So that'll be changing for everyone who does pay attention. That's awesome. Nabil, thank you for coming on the show. No problem. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed the conversation, guys. Nabu, thank you for coming on the show. I had the best time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I appreciate you all. All right. Bye for now.